British-built Honda Civic hatchback is now in its 10th generation, and this time around, it looks a whole lot more conventional, but still pretty wacky, than before. It's enjoyed the largest single model development program in Honda's history, and unlike previous incarnations, it will be sold in essentially the same form around the globe. Interesting looks divide opinion the Civic's relatively low roof and sporting body that means it's not a car for shrinking violets. The front and rear bumpers are low and aggressively styled, while the sloping, fastback tailgate is more coupe than family hatchback. The sporting look is deliberate, Honda wants to attract new buyers to the Civic, and believes making it look and feel more dynamic is the correct way of going about things. It's longer, lower and lighter than before, and the way the new Civic is styled, with its purposeful looking air intakes, vents and spoilers, Honda is making sure buyers know about it. Is there more room in the Honda Civic? The additional length over the old model, combined with the stretched wheelbase, has given the new Civic more passenger space in the rear. In the front, there's also more headroom, which adds to the sense of airiness inside. The Civic now has a lower and more reclined driving position, which is part of its new sporting persona, probably good enough reason for it losing a dash of rear headroom. The boot is usefully sized, with a capacity of 478 litres with the rear seats in place. It has a split floor for added practicality, and the slimline luggage cover that slides across the low abbey is a very neat touch. Three petrol engines and one diesel, two transmissions at launch, the Civic was available with 1.0-litre three-cylinder and 1.5-litre four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engines. The smaller of the two develops 129 horsepower and has an official combined fuel consumption figure of 55.4 miles per gallon. The larger 1.5-litre engine produces a generous 182 horsepower and returns 46.3 miles per gallon. Unusually, Honda offers both engines with its CVT automatic transmission, there's a slight payoff in terms of efficiency, and it's a slick shifting transmission. The company says 40% of buyers plump for this version. So, what about diesels? An updated version of the previous generation Civic's 1.6-litre iDTech power plant launched early in 2018. Despite the decline in diesel sales, Honda expects it to be very popular still, and it boasts the lowest running costs in the range with claimed economy of 80.7 miles per gallon and 93 grams slash km of CO2. High performance Type R tops out at 169 miles per hour. As is now customary with the Civic, Honda released a performance version to head the range. It hit UK showrooms in July 2017, and the Type R became the fastest road-going Civic of all thanks to its 320 horsepower 2.0-litre turbocharged engine, above. Performance figures are impressive, 0 to 62 miles per hour takes 5.7 seconds and maximum speed is 169 miles per hour if that acceleration figure feels off the pace, consider that the Civic is front-wheel drive and its faster rivals, such as the Ford Focus RS and Volkswagen Golf R four-wheel drive. Available in two trim levels, Standard and GT, the Civic Type R is more habitable than earlier cars to wear this badge, thanks to a new comfort mode. GT models are fitted with additional standard equipment over what is an already generous spec. Read how the Honda Civic Type R drives in our buying and selling section. The verdict compared with its main rivals, the Ford Focus, Vauxhall Astra and Volkswagen Golf, it is still a highly styled and unconventional looking car, which makes it a good choice for those who want to stand out in a crowd. Don't let the new styling fool you into thinking that this Civic is any less interesting than before, it has a sophisticated engine lineup and upgraded suspension. Overall, it's more powerful and efficient than before, and certainly more accommodating, making it a compelling choice against the mainstream opposition. Read on to find out everything you need to know about the Honda Civic hatchback, three petrol engines and one diesel 1.0 litre three cylinder boasts 129 horsepower but the 1.5 punches out an impressive 182 horsepower with two power units to choose from initially, you might be forgiven for thinking that the range is lacking. Not so, the 1.0 litre 129 horsepower tech turbo is a potent little thing with huge attention paid to its cooling system and the efficiency of its turbocharger. With 129 horsepower available you get a lot of bang for your buck, despite its tiny size. The 1.5 litre 4 cylinder 182 horsepower tech turbo is also powerful for its comparatively small engine capacity, again, the turbocharger is working hard for its living. We'll love the gear change quality and pedal weight though. 
Our choice minus 129 horsepower tech turbo both of the core Honda Civic engine certainly put the disappointing performance of its 1.4 and 1.8 litre predecessors in the shade. But the smaller of the two current power plants is a genuine star. With a maximum speed of 126 miles per hour and 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 10.8 seconds, it looks good on paper, but on the road, this eager engine belies its tiny capacity. It feels big hearted. It has a slightly gruff, offbeat sound we've come to associate with three cylinder motors, but you're mainly aware of it when you're accelerating hard. Once it's cruising, it settles down to a muted hum. You will have to work it on hills or when fully loaded, and it can feel lacking, compared with rival turbo diesels, when asked to pull from low revs, but in reality, it's a minor niggle in day to day driving. Punchier 182 horsepower tech turbo fastest of the non type R Civics is also small in terms of size, given its generous power output, but thanks to its turbocharger and clever tech variable valve system, which tweaks the engine's performance to priorities economy or power, it feels like a much larger power unit. The performance figures back this up, 0 to 62 miles per hour takes 8.2 seconds, with a claimed top speed of 137 miles per hour, and on the road it feels quiet at motorway speeds and smooth in traffic. It doesn't particularly enjoy being revved, however, feeling strained if you hold on to gears for too long. Despite this, it's the engine to go for if you're a high mileage driver or regularly load the car up. Punchy and refined 1.6 litre ride tech diesel the Civic lineup was completed early in 2018 with the addition of a 1.6 litre ride tech diesel engine to the range. Packing 120 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque and available in S, say, SR and X modules, it's a smooth performer with impressively low claimed running costs. It'll go from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 10.5 seconds and onto a top speed of 125 miles per hour. It doesn't feel overly rapid, however, the way its power is delivered is very smooth indeed. The 300 Newton meters torque figure helps with strong in gear acceleration, and if you need to drop a gear or two, the six speed manual gearbox is as slick as it is in any other Civic. In fact, it feels an even easier version to drive than the turbocharged petrols, avoiding any kind of jerkiness that we've experienced in the 1.0 litre manual. It never feels overwhelmingly urgent, but it feels perfectly judged for the Civic and will suit buyers down to the ground, especially if you spend a lot of time on the motorway. Automatic gearbox option you might be forgiven for thinking that a 1.0 litre CVT automatic sounds like a recipe for daily misery, but it's actually a real gem. Honda has done great work retuning its CVT gearbox to work efficiently by keeping the engine spinning at its sweetest point halfway up the rev range. Keep it out of sport mode and it will run at seriously low revs when you don't need acceleration, but on a light throttle, it steps through a series of simulated ratios, acting like a conventional 7-speed auto. If you want performance, put it in sport and use the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Here, it responds beautifully. Overall. The CVT version works well as a package, and in daily use, it's actually preferable to the 6-speed manual version because it negates the small hole in the engine's power delivery. There are no appreciable differences in performance and fuel consumption figures, either. The 1.5-litre engine is also available in CVT automatic form, which also works well, with its simulated 7-speed setup, but bizarrely, its maximum speed drops by 10 miles per hour according to Honda's own figures. Hot Civic Type R on a different planet producing 320 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque, Honda's flagship turbocharged Civic Type R rivals the Ford Focus RS, seat Leon Cupra 300 and Volkswagen Golf R. Unlike these cars, its front wheel drive and is only available in six speed manual form. In terms of performance, it's up there with its fastest rivals, and overall, it's a front running hot hatchback, that in terms of daily usability. It a useful improvement over its hardcore predecessor. New suspension layout results in excellent handling now up there with the class leaders safe and stable, but also enjoyable to drive given that it has an all new body and running gear, and the styling carries nothing over from previous Honda Civics, it seems fitting that the new car doesn't drive like the old one. The first thing you notice when you get onto twisting roads is how much grip and poise there is in corners, and how well damped it is on less than perfect roads. It's not perfect. Though, as the rear end is a little more unsettled than a Volkswagen Golf or Ford Focus in particular, but this changes when the car is carrying rear passengers. 
The steering is accurate and well weighted, yet feels very much like the last generation Civic in that it lacks the final degree of road feel. But it's perfectly good for a family car, more than adequate for Kina drivers, and the payoff is that it's perfectly set up for motorway driving. Type R differences there are many, so it's difficult where to start. Its steering is sharper, ride is much firmer, although in terms of damping it's controlled and progressive. In other words, you feel the bumps, but the suspension setup rounds off the sharpest edges. Where the Type R scores over its predecessor is that it now comes with a comfort mode, which when selected, results in a less stiff ride, and far more comfortable driving experience. Clearly, Honda has been listening to customer criticism of the old one. Plenty of adjustability in steering wheel and seat clear instrument display punctuated by large digital speedo let down by poor quality of steering wheel buttons the Honda Civic benefits from a well thought out dashboard design, with simple to use heating and ventilation controls. Compared with the old Civic, it's far simpler, but when pitched against the Volkswagen Golf and Mazda 3 in particular, some of the functions around the cruise control and infotainment could be a little easier. We love the large digital speedometer surrounded by the rev counter, with the trip computer functions housed within. It's functional and stylish, if not quite premium enough, if that's what you're looking for. Good quality, plenty of space material quality is good, the steering wheel itself is nice, and yet it doesn't quite have that last 10% of polish we've come to expect from the class leading Golf. This is most evident in the design and finish of the steering wheel buttons. They feel cheap and plasticky and are a black mark on an otherwise accomplished cabin. Finally, all Civics are packed with near MPV slash SUV levels of storage space. The locker between the front seats is impressively large, it's deep, square and pretty much perfect for families who like to carry plenty of clutter without making the cabin look untidy. Lower driving position might not suit all rear seat headroom good, but not great impressive motorway ride comfort the Honda Civic is a very comfortable car. It's at the softer end of the scale in its class in terms of ride quality, and as a consequence, it handles rougher city roads just as well as high speed motorway surface changes. The driving position will feel a little odd coming straight out of an older Civic, and sitting lower means there's a loss of front visibility, especially around the bulky A pillars. Although road draw is well insulated and the ride controlled nicely, there is a little more wind noise than average, which takes an element of polish away from the Civic's overall comfort especially in comparison with the supremely impressive Volkswagen Golf. X-Spec cars and upwards feature a two-setting adaptive damper system which adjusts the firmness of the Civic's suspension. It's a nice idea, but works best left in comfort mode. The driver's seat is well-shaped and offers plenty of adjustment and support, and in the rear, you're not short of legroom and enjoy a well-shaped rear bench. It loses out to the Golf and Ford Focus in terms of rear headroom, though, which is a concern for growing families. The Type R's driver's seat looks like a traditional racing bucket, but in fact is so well shaped and supportive, that most drivers won't struggle to find the correct seating position. Rear seat passengers in the Type R may feel a touch claustrophobic given the dark, one-piece front seats. Petrol Civics, particularly the 1.0-litre turbo, can become quite vocal at higher revs when demanding more from the engine. That isn't an issue the iDTech suffers with. It's the same 1.6-litre unit found in the old Civic diesel, but Honda has fiddled with various mechanical components in the engine to ensure that it's much smoother and quieter than before. On the move it's very hushed indeed, only making itself heard under hard acceleration. Even then, vibration through the pedals to the driver is minimal, and the sound is well insulated, too. Impressive standard kit levels from midrange upwards advanced safety kit on all spec levels small selection of option packs also available for the 2017 model, Honda decided to give its 1.0 and 1.5 litre models completely different trim designations, with the smaller and giant car retaining pretty much the same lineup as before. The 1.5 S, though, get new trim names, intended, no doubt, to attract premium car buyers, for which older style badging just won't do. All models are big on standard fit safety kit, with event the entry level S getting automatic headlights, adaptive cruise control and the Honda sensing suite of advanced active safety technologies. The infotainment setup is good, but not quite as intuitive to use as the Volkswagen Golfs, but it's perfectly well equipped. The 129 horsepower Tech Turbo model is available in four trims, S, C, SR and X while the 182 horsepower of Tech Turbo comes in Sport, Sport Plus and Prestige forms.
Standard Honda Civic hatchback equipment the same model gets heated front seats, heated door mirrors, an 8-speaker audio system, 16-inch alloy wheels and air conditioning. SR models gain the Honda Connect 2 infotainment suite, 17-inch alloys, front and rear parking sensors, rear parking camera and dual zone air conditioning. You also get a larger infotainment screen, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity as standard. The top 1.0 liter car, the X, adds leather upholstery, lead front headlamp clusters, smart keyless entry and start, a power tilt panoramic sunroof, and a premium audio system, 11 speakers with 465 watts output. Executive grade models are also fitted with the dynamic damper control system. The 1.5 liter also comes in three variations, Sport, Sport Plus and Prestige. Sport models get 17-inch alloys, front and rear parking sensors, a rear parking camera, the Honda Connect 2 infotainment suite, dual zone air conditioning, LED headlamp clusters, twin center exhaust outlets and a body kit. Sport Plus models add an electric panoramic sunroof, dynamic damper control, a premium audio system, 11 speakers with 465 watts output, smart keyless entry and start and a wireless charging pad in the center console. Finally, the Prestige version gets a chrome front grille and door handle finishes, leather upholstery and heated rear seats. The upcoming Civic Type R will come in two trim levels, Standard and GT. Both will be well equipped, however the latter should benefit from extra kits such as SatNav and dual zone climate control. Optional Honda Civic hatchback extras There is a choice of two optional exterior styling finishes, black line and orange line. The black line and orange line gain a front spoiler, side skirts and rear diffuser, as well as mirror caps in either black or orange. Orange line also includes interior accents across the dashboard in the same vivid color. Three option packs are available across all models to further enhance the functional features of the new Civic. The Civic is offered with the option of a number of musingly named special equipment packs, illumination and sophistication, ambient lights in the front footwells, door lining and center console to give a soft, cool and sophisticated ambience to the interior, as well as illumination, touring and organization, protection and safety, and powering communications. Reassessed 5-star Euro and cap rating lots of safety systems as standard autonomous emergency braking standard on all models Honda Civic hatchback safety is good, but not as strong as we expected at launch, only receiving a 4-star Euro and cap rating in July 2017. However, Following a modification to the design of the side curtain airbag, the Civic was retested before the end of 2017 and again the full 5-star quota. Collision Mitigation Braking System Forward Collision Warning Lane Departure Warning Road Departure Mitigation Lane Keeping Assist System Adaptive Cruise Control Traffic Sign Recognition Intelligent Speed Assistance Intelligent Adaptive Cruise Control Plenty of room for 4 people. 5 a squeeze large boot offers ample load lugging credentials interior is peppered with cup holders and storage areas the 5 door Honda Civic has plenty of room for 4 people, with ample legroom front and rear. 5 would be a squeeze as the rear seat isn't particularly generous, but this is no better or worse than the Ford Focus or Vauxhall Astra, for instance. The boot is certainly large enough for most families needs, with the rear seats up, space across the range varies between 420-478 litres thanks to the central exhaust on sportier models. The seats don't fold completely flat, but there's still plenty of space when they're down. Luggage volume grows to 1,209-1,267 litres, depending on model, which is above class average. There is a split, level floor, so you can remove the boot liner, opening up to a much deeper luggage area, very much in keeping with the current trend among crossovers. Up front, there are the usual bevy of cup holders, and a large, lidded storage area in the center console. The glove box isn't massive, which is quite normal in this class of cars, but the lid itself has a nice, high-quality feel when you close it. Bear in mind, there's no estate version, and Honda has confirmed that there are no plans to replace the old Civic Tourer.